obvious ones, uh, obviously just to sort of uh, pull a lot of people in. But um, over the last five years, since you released uh, the Draw EP, um, you've done obviously the two albums now, you've got OK Computer. Um, how would you sort of sum, sum up that period, the last five years? Um, it's, it, in, in some ways, it actually feels that we're only really starting in some ways. Um, I know it sounds off five years down the line, considering how many gigs we've done, but there's something about releasing this album which I, I, it, we feel, it, I think it's just a really good um, representation of us. It's, I think it's the closest we've come to feeling confident about what we do. Um, you know, we, the way we approached it was to, to produce it on our own. Um, and that, that gave us, you know, the responsibility came full circle back onto us. Everything. So, you know, I think um, it's just been this time of you know, gradually building things up. And now it just feels like there's this awareness of us around in a lot of places now. Um, and we're just quite excited to see you know, how, how this album is actually received now. Because there's, there's been quite a gap between, obviously, uh, Fabio and the yeah. other, rather than Ben saying. So the, the, you know, the, but the funny thing is, like looking, I, I think like looking at each stage, it's you know, what what what's an album supposed to do? An album's supposed to capture. It's like a musical photo of the band at a certain stage. And the thing about going back to the Drill EP and everything is that it has. And at times when we listen to Pablo Honey, when we, when we, you know, in after sight, when we recorded it, after we recorded it, there were things that we weren't happy about. But the things that we weren't happy about really are our own playing, you know, and we progressed as a band, you know, through 12 years of playing because we, you know, we started this band in 85 at school. So if you learn your instruments as a trade, you know, the only way you can actually get better is by going out and doing loads and loads and loads of gigs. Mm. And, and, and the Drill EP represents us at a certain time. Pablo Honey sounds, you know, that Creeps recorded over, over five years ago. And it's kind of, it's, 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 it's pretty naive and it's, it's still great, but it's, it's, but I think each, and what the great thing about anything that we've done, and also if you like all the B-sides, and what we're hoping in the future is to B-sides album, bring out a B-sides album, please. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're really proud of those, because they're definitely, you know, they, they fill in the chunks of time in between doing the bulk of the album. So you see the progression on that. So um, I think it's really interesting, and this album, like Phil says, represents us now, and we've, we got to stage last October, this is like 96, and we did the first session for OK Computer, and we were playing like we've never played before, and it was really, really bizarre, doing takes, going in and listening to it, and going, yeah, Jesus Christ, was that us? And, and it, was, it was really, really, I mean, it's an amazing feeling, because it's like, it's like 12 years you've been leading up to this, yeah. Yeah. and floundering, and you know, sometimes you have your on days, some days you have your off days before, but there was like a lot more consistency, and, and it wasn't kind of like an understanding, like you do this, I'll do that kind of thing. It's much more because it's just, it's just literally through playing, having the luxury of being together as a band for 12 years, which I don't think can be underestimated. You know, it's so important. We're very, the, the marriage seems to have sort of, well, you've settled in the sense that you know, I mean, you're perfectly in tune with what you know, each of you are doing and how you do it, I'm sure. Yeah, but like any good relationship, you don't take one another for granted. No. And, and, and that's what we've been through, you know, and there'll be plenty more we've been through um, emotional problems and, and, and infighting and stuff like that. But we've always kind of sorted it out and it'll carry on, but there's always a belief like if there's a, big, a next big one, it won't be all over. There's, there's, there's kind of, who, but who knows, it could be like that. That's the other thing, is that you never know. That's what keeps it exciting. <laughs> Um, as I say, what, what was interesting is that I mean, the rehearsals for, uh, for our computers started last year already, um, um, in February. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's a, why such a, a long time? I mean, I know you're very sort of, uh, not, uh, what would you call it? I wouldn't call it precious, but you. <laughs> yeah, but the songs have to evolve. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I've got like 20 cassettes right. from, from Morgan, always took in a Walkman to the and recorded usually the uh, a bulk of a session. And you see how so it's brilliant to listen to. I mean, boring probably for anyone else apart from a hardcore Radiohead fan. But it's like, it's really interesting because you get, you know, you get a song like No Surprises, how it started. And you forget all those things as well, you know, and it's, it's, 
and, and I've got the same for the Benz as well. I've got the Benz sessions, how, how that started, mm. and those songs. And it was, you know, it's really interesting because tempos changed, lyrics changed, and, you know, two weeks later things change. It's also a lot we have to learn as well. Yeah, it's true. As you say, you know, coming back to this whole thing, evolution of the song, but the way we, you know, coming back to this um, thing of producing it ourselves, there was so much to actually get our heads around on that. The fact that, you know, we we actually had to, to say, okay, this is when the song's working, this is when we have to move on. And for us, I mean, there's always been a producer there to actually say that and actually usher us down certain routes. And, um, but to actually um, do that ourselves, I think, you know, each one of us is, is a little freaked out by it, so at that point, so having that kind of freedom. Um, so, you know, for a year to actually learn all that, I think we've done pretty well, actually. And we did quite a bit of touring in the meantime. Yes, as well. which you did in between, which was interesting. I mean, was that was that just to, to try the songs out to an audience? And, and it was, see it it was a bit of both. We had to go back to America. They wanted the record company wanted us to go back to America twice last year because the Benz was doing all right in America. Yeah. So we did our own tour and then we supported Alanis for about three or four days, three or four weeks. But the opportunity is there to play new songs. In the Alanis states, especially, we have 35, 40 minutes on stage. Half the set, you know, five out of the nine songs or whatever were, were, were new songs. And it's great, so we went straight back into the studio and, and we were already kind of, we were playing really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, your, your, your choice of venue for recording the album was also sort of quite interesting. I mean, from yeah. uh, doing it at uh, Hand Applause, which that was where you started it. That's right. And then you moved it over to uh, Jane Seymour's house. Right. Now, that, now that was interesting to me because you know why why at that point did you move from from your own place out? <laughs> um, oh, the, the place that we've got is, is actually it, it's brilliant for rehearsing it, but the, the facilities are a little uh, spartan to say the least. So, um, so also we we want we decided we <laughs> to actually go somewhere where we're actually completely immersed in it. So you know, but we could cut ourselves off really um, and just just listen to ourselves. Um, uh, the trouble is Candle Applause wasn't residential, was it? So no. the sessions well, it was the it was the height of the summer. If you're a farm animal, yeah. <laughs> it's the height of the summer. Euro ninety six is on. There's a lot of you know, beautiful summer evenings and we hadn't been at home for a summer for ages, so by about 10 in the evening, we were all kind of like, Paul yeah. Nigel was kind of like, right, guys, we're going to stay till 2, 3, and we were like, well, we were thinking uh, of packing out <laughs> today, right? So we've well, done two hours today. <laughs> but the, the interesting also awesome thing about Candle Applause is that, that those sessions was that there was no stress whatsoever. Mm. It was incredibly easy. And it was very weird, because that's the first time it had been like that, and we didn't think that anything productive would come out of it. And it was only going on and doing you know, more, when we went to check out to Jane Seymour's, we did, we did more versions of No Surprises, which we ended up using the first take of the first day in Candle Applause, so our first day recording in our new studio environment. But we did like another four or five versions of No Surprises and actually came back and saw what, what was great about that sound and that, and that yeah. time. So um, we actually did get, I mean, Subterranean was basically tracked there, Electioneering was basically tracked there. Tourist. Tourist was basically tracked there. So four out of the twelve songs were in a month that we didn't think that that, that work and where everyone was kind of ah manana manana, you know, we were very <laughs> <laughs> whatever, yeah, yeah. And um, if, if if you sort of had to sort of take an average day, as I say, you, said, you took it quite easy. Um, there wasn't any pressure to uh, to put something together really. Yeah. Um, you know, in a certain time frame. Uh, what was an average day like, I mean, in, in the studio? There's no such thing as an average day in the studio, unfortunately. You know, it's, you've got five people, five different people, well, six, including Nigel, who, who engineered it, and you've got all those different moods firing off against each other. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> how you can ever predict what is going to happen within a day, it's, it's, it's impossible. I mean, you get to the situation where you, you can go for about two or three days and you think, nothing's happening and it can get a little depressing at points and then suddenly everything will just click in on, on, on another day um, and you know suddenly you get 
get rather cocky and think. <laughs> I, like the analogy, I like the analogy of a Wild West town, you know, some days it's real quiet, nothing's going on. <laughs> and correct. And then on other days everyone's firing at one another, it's like sniper fire from windows. And then the other days, you know, there's a wedding, it's all good. So it's, as you said, it's, it's like anything can happen. Yeah. It's true. The only regular thing is, a, is grub, is feed times. Yeah. 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 Which was amazing. Yeah. We looked forward to that. Yes, yeah, so I think we all put about an extra stone on. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a heavyweight version of a radio head, and that's, that's not talking in terms of our material. <laughs> and as um, I say, talking about uh, Nigel and Godrich, I mean, you've used him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's engineered for you in the past and um, in, the, in the most in the recent bins. stuff. Yeah. And the, yeah. Then, then you started to produce. Yeah. Um, why, um, why him again? Well, because first of all, he's a he's an excellent engineer. He's a brilliant engineer. He likes to work quickly as we do. And also, I mean, I think probably the main thing is probably personality as well. In in the sense that he's he's tw he's 27, 28, our age or whatever. And it's really nice. It's a great feeling to have um, people who are your own age. There are six of you in the studio, and you're actually doing it. I mean. It was great doing an album with John, and actually John Lecky actually sowed the seeds of this. He said, you can do what you want in the studio. You know, he, he, he demystified the whole process. Um, so, and when, when he went away for three days to do some mixing during the fence, we did some recording with Nige, and it was like, it, was, it just felt so good, you know. It, it, was, uh, it was a bit more hit and miss than, than, than John in those days, but by the time we were doing OK Computer, We'd done some stuff with Nigel already. It just, it, it, it felt really right. There's, he's a real fan of, of the band, and we're a real fan of his. And, and so you sort of grown with the band, really? Yeah. Where, you, where your sound is And going. the psychology of it is very important as well. It's very easy to get freaked out by like some kind of, you know, when John Leckie was first, the first four or five weeks in Rack were a nightmare. And that wasn't because of him, that was because of us, because there was John Leckie, this, you know, this big producer, you know, huge, number of albums that we loved that he'd done and it is it's you know you can you can't help but think um all the time like god he engineered the first george harrison my sweet lord session here i'm fucking up my guitar part you know what well, must you there's all that kind of stuff all that history in, and and of course that's not what john's thinking because you know producers no, don't course. do that yeah, yeah. but so nigel's nigel's just you know he's 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 excellent as well he's yeah. a great great engineer and it was interesting, I mean, you worked with uh, Paul Calderi as well, I mean, on, on that Sean band, Slade, yeah. Um, which was also an interesting one, I mean, because at that point you were torn into a, a young band, a new band, and uh, and you were working with someone, with an American yeah. uh, producer, which, as I say, wasn't a typical thing at that point, I think, to do for a lot of British. British yeah, I think at the time, I mean, if, if you look at the bands that we were listening to, it was, you know, bands like Sonic Youth and... Um, Pixies and uh, Dinosaur Junior, and so I mean, very, very much at the centre of that whole whole scene. So for us, it seemed like a fairly natural choice at the time. Um, again, we, you know, we were, we were quite in awe of oh, them yeah. as well. And their, their pedigree. Mm -hmm. True, true. I mean, at that early stage as well. And um, with you touring, uh, I mean, you did you did the American dates of the Lamas one. I said, then you also did some dates in Holland, uh, yeah. in Belgium. It seems that uh, you, you, your following there seems to be obviously uh, pretty big as well. But um, was there um, was it actually a beneficial thing to tour? To well, to tour during recording the album. Yeah. I mean, because it's sort of taking you away from that environment with that you're sort of getting into, and then you're, you're productive, and then all of a sudden you're away again. But that, yeah. Was that good or bad? It, it was actually really good for us. I mean, we we needed to I think. When we work best is when we're actually stimulated and, and challenged. And there's a, there's a challenge for being out on the road and then suddenly coming back in and recording, which is what we did. Mm. We came back straight from an Alanis tour, and within four days we're in the studio. And we, in those first three days in the studio, against all the odds, we actually did so much stuff. I mean, we basically did the tracking for Climbing Up the Walls, Let Down, um, Karma Police. Um, we did a lot in those, and that these are like live takes as well, you know, what you hear on Climbing Up the Walls, most of it is, apart from the strings, 
at, uh, most of it is, in fact, all of it is tracked live. I mean, it's everyone in a room playing together. So, um, yeah, you, you, it's it's really good for us to be able. We like that idea of, of being in the studio for a week and then, hey, let's go out and do a couple of shows and, and see how people see how people react, respond to the yeah. gig. Mm. I mean, it's a bit of a nightmare logistically for our crew and stuff like that because they're kind of like stood down for a week and then they're back on active duty, yeah. but. It's really good for us. It really works for us, yeah. and it, I think it would be great to come to the, you know, you get to the stage where I think we would really respond to it well. That you forget all this nonsense about album tour, tour album tour tour. That you could just you could just tour an album and, and I'm sounding a bit like the Grateful Dead. <laughs> Carry on, Jerry. Yes. <laughs> but it would be it would be because we get so much. You know, a lot of the creative stuff is actually done on the roads. You know. Tom does a lot of his writing on the road as well. Yeah. And it's funny because when you're actually on the road, that, that's the time when you get more time to yourself. Yeah. You can actually, you can actually concentrate yeah. on, 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 on music, writing um, songs, yeah. sorting out your parts. Because yeah. I mean, like, when you're at home, they're just you know, thousand and one other things that will crowd the, in on you. The bills. Which, the bills, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also a really good way of actually seeing what songs um, do work and yeah. how they work. I mean, like, Take paranoid Android, for instance. Yeah. I mean, it's it's fairly lengthy in its current state. It is when, right. <laughs> but when we were touring it, it was about ten minutes long, wasn't it? Yeah, ten minutes long. Well, live it would work, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> it won't be ten minutes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, that that for a first single is, uh, I mean, it's a brilliant song. I mean, you know, me and my bias way. Um, <laughs> but uh, for a first single, I mean. Come yeah, on, you know, I mean, you you battled with radio. But, but let's see, what we, 20 years ago, that wouldn't, no one have thought anything of it, would yeah, they? It's yeah. just, it's whether you're a music fan or whether you're a fan. I mean, I, I was talking to a radio station yesterday in Catalonia, and they were saying, they they were on the phone, they're going, this Barrel Android song, it's a very very long song, and I I you know you have to turn it around and said. Well, you know, it depends whether you're a music fan or whether you, you cater for your, ad, you, you know, your advertisers, whether you're, you do a radio station to get adverts and make money, or whether you actually, you know, obviously there's a fine line and there are commercial implications, but there's still room for a six and a half minute single. If it will, that will radio, like radio, <laughs> will K-Rock turn around and go, oh great, we'll stick this on our playlist? Probably I mean, not. This, no. is, this is a problem, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, as you say, I mean, for the music fan, it's, it's, it's perfection because that is the way the song yeah. should be. But you so. see, what we're going to do is, anyway, in America, we're not releasing it to radio. It's going, we, because we've done a video, it's going exclusive to MTV because there's no point going to, I mean, the radio one in England, they're playing it, they're hammering it to death. Yeah, yeah. And but K Rock or whatever, radio stations wouldn't pick up if it becomes like a. Then, from yes, MTV, like, then of course they'll like play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's um, no. I mean, yeah, would you would, would you challenging the system in a way? Yeah, I mean, maybe not obviously, but you know, you're not. Uh, I think we had to work with uh, the songs that were on the album. Really. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And it was it's the first song we played to our friends. Yeah. You know, so it's you know it's as I said, you know, it, it the reason why why we played that song. Um, First of all, was the fact that it seemed to actually draw people into the album as a whole. It seemed, to, it's, you know, it's, it's you know, the sound is coming from a lot of diverse areas, mm -hmm. really. And that's that's for one song of the album that actually encapsulates all of that, I think. So. And then, I mean, the interesting thing is now that you, you're you going to have 12 videos that you're going yeah. to make for this as well. It's, uh, it's true. Why? I mean, not that it's a bad thing, but uh, was, was that sort of... Um... Do you mind? I'm going to just add all this. Can I? Sure, do. Yeah, do. What was the... So say, uh, whose idea was it to do the 12 videos? Now, is that sort of an accompaniment to the album? It was It was our video commissioner, Lily at Parlophone. Mm. She, um... There was this whole thing with which we decided, like on the bends, to start taking videos a little bit more seriously, and not um, uh, and not necessarily button with our own ideas, go with directors, and and, and and let them be creative and try and do something different. You know, get away from the performance video, get away from this. So, with the with the sort of the, I don't know. It was it got to say just how like how do you beat a video like Street Script? How do you beat, beat a video like Just or, or, or um, 
uh, fake plastic trees. You know, it's very difficult. So, so what, and Dilly said, well, let's turn it around. Let's just do a video for each song, keep them relatively low budget, and try and try and do it different. Use animators, and and Power on Android is is animated uh, video with us barely in it. You know, one shot in a barn. There's a sort of figure called Robin. Yeah. Have you seen Robin? Uh, I haven't. I've, I've, I must admit, I've read a lot about it because that's obviously, I mean, the naming of the album as well. I mean, and uh, sort of the paranoid android, and to me, the link with um, uh, the the time as a guide to the universe, or type of thing. I mean, is is there a theme, um, an obvious theme with the album? I mean, are, is that what are you pushing for that, or? No, no, that no. makes it sound, just sound a bit like a concept album. Yeah, really. yeah. Well, um, this is you know. I think uh, no. If, if if a concept ever came in, into it, it would have been at the end when we were just trying to pull in like, all these different elements of, of the album to actually make it let it uh, make sense as, as you know the body of work. Then, but there wasn't something that we thought, okay, well, yes, let's let's develop, uh, let's really examine this whole idea of technology and music and, yeah, and yeah. technology and how it relates to us today, I mean, that really didn't come into it. Um, I think, I think, you know, of course, I mean, I, with, lyrically with Tom, I mean, he's, um, the, the, all the lyrics were written within a certain uh, time frame. Um, so, I mean, they are going to be links, I mean, you know, it's, uh, they're going to be crossover in, in his interests. In but to actually sit down and um, make make a concept album would just be so incredibly tedious yeah, and, yeah. and just really limiting from a from, um, from a recording point of view. And an obvious one, the title of the album. Okay, computer. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of what's 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 really interesting about it is I think it's a, it's a working title. It was the name of a song that was not a very good song. And uh, that never was never recorded, and um, and it kind of lasted. It, it there's this whole there's a there's that whole thing. You know, it can be taken anyway. There's a duality about it. It can be a positive force and a negative force. Okay, computer. You know, it's let's do this. I find it's the technology, or it's the other the downside of it. It's the how like 2001 kind of computers running the ship. You know, the, so there's there's but it's lots of things. You know, we bought all this. We recorded this album um, basically with gear we bought created a mobile setup and um, we we basically just you know were surrounded by this technology we didn't have a fucking clue how it how a lot of it worked and and part of the process was you know you know going in there being nervous surrounded by all these toys and kind of like well how does that putting knobs and how does that work and it was it's very kind of it's very liberating experience. It's kind of the whole thing like when kids, you know, kids are supposed to be much better with computers than adults because they just like they yeah. dive headfirst in and they don't care, and adults are like, oh, can't do that, might break it, sort of thing. So there was a bit of that, and, and a few things got broken, and, but it was it was it was fine. And then uh, we'd have to buy different bits because you hadn't got the right bit and all that. <laughs> so you're techno junkies then. You pick count. Technology, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, it's like, I love the idea of technology and stuff. And you look through these magazines and they're great. You go, oh, I want one of those. And you almost, you almost always, when you get one of these things, say it can do this, this, and this, it always lets you down. You always feel like it's not as good as it could be because your brain kind of takes it on and reads this thing and goes, this is going to be problem solving the, most, the biggest thing that you've ever you, you've had or needed. And it's kind of a bit like that. So it's like working with computers. It's, it's, it, it's, it's actually like computer games as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like if you, you went back to something like Space Invaders, which at the time just went, wow, yeah, that was the graphics on this are amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, just, I mean, of course, there's a matter of passion again for it now, but yeah. in terms of graphically speaking, it just looks really limited. Yeah. So, you know, it's just such a quick turnover in, in technology. It's, yeah, you because know. I mean, obviously that's going to that's going to affect your recording because you've got all this technology coming in. But you know, I mean, a lot of the stuff that you intended to use, you never landed up using, and landed up just putting it through, you know, through your traditional pedals. And yeah, things like yeah. That. it's it's because we've we've got we we get bored very 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 easily, and we want things instantly. One of the things that didn't work out like that, but one of the things we want to do is work quickly. And if you've got a computer and you've got to set up click tracks, you've got to set up sound and stuff. It takes a long time. And we did it with Airbag, and that was yeah. good. But after two days of 
you and Tom doing that, and it was a great, great thing that you did. I'm not doing that. I'm not dissing it at all because it all has right, to be done. Just carry on. No, 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 carry on. But it, it gets, you know, if we <laughs> done you that, said at the time, if we'd <laughs> done that with every single track, you know, 24 dra- days, and that's what it would, you know, yeah. would have taken because, you know, we're not fast workers. It, it would have been so. There's, whereas, you know, climbing up the walls, you do that within five minutes or whatever. You get a sound going. You're all playing, and it's instant. You've got something to, you can work to, and, and something you can be really um, motivated and, and, and get a vibe off, really. And what did you retain from the first two albums and you ended up incorporating on the new album and, and what was new, things that maybe you hadn't done before? Did you sort I of think... go back and have a look at the, the last two albums and say, okay, well, no. we like that, we didn't like that, no. let's take you know, um, I, mean, uh, I think when, when we started off, and it's not as if we took the you know, Radiohead blueprint and ripped it up and said, let's, let's recreate ourselves. I mean, there's a real sense of, uh, of a, de- a development there. I mean, you can actually see the thread from, say, that drill EP straight up to a, a computer, and I think you can still tell it's the same band there. Um, and then, you know, take a song like Lucky, I mean, I think that, that's a very good kind of midpoint song between the Benz and, and OK Computer. Yeah. Lucky was a watershed song, wasn't it? Yeah. In terms of Tom's writing and... And that does appear on the album. It is on the album. Is it is on the album? Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. Track okay. 11. Oh, okay. That's right. But, I mean, that, for that, you know, only in terms of recording, that fell, fell midway yes. between the two yes. albums yeah. anyway. Um, but, you know, that, that's, that still sounds... That still sounds very close to the Benz. Mm. But, I mean, the way we approached that was the first thing that we could actually produce ourselves, and in a way that that gave us like the the direction for for, for OK Computer. I think. Are you sort of aware of your sound that there is a Radiohead sound? Well, I think we're aware of the, there definitely was a Radiohead sound on the first two albums, and it was something to get away from. You know, I mean. We, one of the things that I think about OK Computer that we li- that a lot of us liked in the band was that we felt that a lot of it didn't sound like Radiohead. Um, but then, you know, you can't... But then as a band, you can't really be objective about these things. And, and of course, be, you, know, you, you don't want to sound like a different band each album. Um, and, and it's not possible to do anyway. I mean, unless you were completely proficient musician and Tom was able to sing in different styles all the time and, and, yeah. and it, it, it's not, you know, it's, I think what's sort of interesting about bands is progression or, or the development or the see how album changes from, from, sure. from album to album. And, and where would you say you are now as far as that progression is? I mean, is there sort of, are you at, at sort of a pinnacle point or are you still sort of we, taking on board and we're, we're still taking board. I mean, I think that after we came out of doing OK Computer, once we finished the album, we felt like we were just drained of any ideas, any more ideas, any new ideas. It was like, you know, we've, we've done all we possibly could on that this album. It was like, we've, we've, we've sweated over it. We were just, you know, completely emotionally and musically drained. And that's why going out onto going out onto the road, going out to tour and, and, and just playing, trying to relearn these songs and play these songs again and just playing as a band. Um, so, no, we, I, 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 maybe in hindsight we'll be able to see where we are, but at the moment it's very... Well, it was very shaky again, because we haven't played since, live since last August. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you, you get to the end of an album and it all sounds quite polished and all quite in control and then yeah. suddenly you get, get it back into into the life situation thing. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I mean, um, the choice to, to to produce yourselves, I mean, as you said it you it is difficult to be objective as a band. I mean um, bands obviously do it, but um, has it has it has it been a good thing uh, yeah. to produce yourselves? It's, it's the it was the natural thing to do. It was with with someone like Nigel. Yes. Um, it was because it was another discipline. It was learning. You know the whole the great thing about having a producer. We 
John Leckie and, and the way that John Leckie was and the way that Sean Slade and Paul Fulderi were, they weren't arrangers. You know, we'd have done all the arranging, we'd done all the music. What they were is they were timekeepers, they were kind of disciplinarians. Mm, which you need. Which you need, you really do. And we had to learn all of that. So it, it, was, it was definitely the right thing. It was the first time we could actually probably take on board and do that. And it was all right doing it for two, two or three days, but whole chunks of time. I just wanted to introduce you to Colin. Hello, oh, Colin. I just wondered who you wanted to invite me to join in. Or... Would you? Yeah, well, you know, just didn't want to... Just for the end of it. Yeah, if you were to... Didn't want to interrupt... Just another five minutes. Yeah, yeah. wrap it up. Just wrap it up. Didn't want to interrupt... Uh, Is that right with the others? Yeah, we've got five minutes. Yeah, time. I could, I could you just won the foot spa, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I've won a foot spa. National radio in the UK. Ah. That's right, I've heard about that. Because <laughs> I must admit your, 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 your internet following and, uh, is, is, is rather large. I recently joined the, the group uh, just to see what people were asking and uh, to say the, the interest among... I mean, um, you did the interview with the Irish Radio um, a couple of weeks ago. I don't know. I can't remember. You did. That. Johnny. No, oh, Johnny did. Johnny That's right. did. Johnny did. Sorry. And uh, to say, because you seem to, seem to. I mean, going back to Barcelona, why, why did you choose to start everything in Barcelona? Do two shows, and then have it, have the break. Uh, why? Yeah. Um, I think, I think we're. Uh, yeah. Have a look around you. <laughs> yes. not, not a difficult one. No, no, but that's um, the obvious. I think we, we, we knew that we'd actually be quite nervous about this this week. You know, it's the first time that people will have heard of playing this new material live well, in, in, in its form as it is now. And so I think we wanted to come somewhere that we could relax as much as possible. Barcelona has always seemed to, um, seemed to have that effect on us. Right. And also, hopefully, everybody who's coming to see us will go back to as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, you you were said to be given free reign uh, with this album by EMI. Does that sort of mean that the, the first two, you had someone sort of knocking on the door? So we, we were just, we were, we were left alone. I think our a &R man came down once or twice. Just, he was on his way down to see his family, so he's passing through. So he popped in. Yeah. Our managers, we'd, we'd ask them for advice halfway through, and they, they'd say, "Look, you know, it's your record. You you do you finish it, and then you know, or you finish tracking, and you think you finish tracking, then come to us and see." So we were left um, entirely to our own devices. And, and, yes, and you know, having to plan things. You know, no one's saying, no one's saying. At Christmas time, by Christmas time, we had to focus on you know 14 tracks. Yeah. So we didn't have anyone putting any pressure, saying well, when's when's. They just said it would be if you what they said. If you want a release before the summer, you have to have it mixed and finished by mid March. And we're like, you know, it's time to go. Our skates on. Yeah, get cracking. Yeah. And um, it's Christmas. Fun. I mean, the M also seems to be pretty optimistic about the album. Um, yeah, and despite that, they've heard it. I know. Um, but uh, <laughs> sorry. Why do you think that is? Because it, it seems almost that this is the. I mean, okay, you are all the comparisons that you have made uh, and everything else, but this seems to be the the big commercial album. Would you sort of agree or not? Well, I, I think a lot of people are saying once they've heard the record, they, <laughs> they, it's gone from commercial suicide, which I didn't, we didn't really respond very well to, because we, we didn't think it was that extreme, yeah. to, uh, to, well, it takes a couple of listens. It does take a couple of listens. Anything, if you do anything different, it's and going to take... And you pay for What? And you pay for an album to get into that full time. Yeah, yeah. But you, you, anything that you listen to, anything that's different, it takes you a couple of listens to get into. It's almost a sign to say that that, that to me is as an album that's got longevity. It's Absolutely. Been, it's got well, all the elements. Because if you just fall into it, then it's, uh, I mean, within a week, you, you, you know, you've lost it. Yeah. 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 And if you have to sum the album up as a whole? As a whole? Finished. Finished. <laughs> Come on. 
Okay, I'm going to ask you one last favor, if I may. I'm going to ask you to do two IDs for me. One, one for my show and then one for the sort of national broadcaster, which is uh, I'm in Um So you can play with it as you will. That's radio voice. So, what's your full name, Jason? Jason Curtis. Jason yeah. Curtis on Five FM. No, I'm not on Five FM. Okay. You can do the one just Five FM straight. And okay. then I, um, I do a show, as I say, uh, called Cutting Edge. Very cliche, okay. but that's the name of the show, all right? So <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> um, okay, so when you're ready, <laughs> do you want to just, I just say one? You do it all together. Okay, in unison. Hello, this is Ed from Radiohead. This is Phil. And this is Colin, and you're listening to Jason Curtis on The Cutting Edge. Thank you. And Thanks. then we can just do the one for five of them. Hi, this is Phil from Radiohead. And this is Colin from Radiohead. And this is Ed from Radiohead. And this is Radiohead on 5FM. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Appreciate your time. Oh, mate. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Jason. That was, thanks. Cool. was that not too bad? That was great. Good. Yeah, good. good. That's cool.